Everybody come on from your seat. Clap your hands to stall us. Need a beat. Here's our $299 buggy. This is a 1994 Easy Go Marathon model. This is the last year they made the Marathon. It's an all steel construction and it's pretty obsolete and hard to get parts for. Uh, one question people have when they buy these is how do I make it go faster? And that's where the problem lies. Uh, you can make any golf cart go faster if you're willing to spend more money on it. Uh, but you have to put more money into it than it's worth. Uh, some folks think we got a great deal on this buggy, 299 bucks, but that's about what it was worth. As you see it here, you're looking at $1,089. In other words, we've put in over twice the purchase price into upgrades and improvements. This includes the lift kit, both front and rear. Um, this makes it ride a little higher and also will eventually allow us to put in larger wheels and tires, which is part of the speed increase. We also added some safety items, a set of seat belts that a friend of ours sold us for $80, uh, side view mirrors, $15 for the pair, uh, rear view mirror, $10. Uh, we have a, lights came with it. Uh, I rewired it with a new light switch and added a uh, Fiamma Italian air horn. <laughs> Gotta have one of those. And we added a beacon uh, for safety since this is being driven on the road and you don't want to end up being run over. Um, that and a few other things uh, have brought the price up. Now how do you make this thing go faster? That's the problem. Uh, this is one of the last of the marathons and it has the solid state controller which is this unit right here. It uses a form of pulse width modulation. As you step on the gas here, on the gas pedal, it activates a small rheostat uh, in that little box there. It goes from zero to I guess 5k ohms and that uh, makes the pulses that go to the motor longer and longer DC pulses. The net effect is to give the motor more voltage rather than using a series of relays and resistors. It's a 36 volt system and you can see there's 36 volt batteries, 6 6 volt batteries, 6 times 6 is 36, one is a little bit of an oddball. Batteries are about two years old which is what made this cart worth $299. Uh, Replacing batteries on this could easily cost $500. You can see I've tried to neaten up and color code the wires a bit, and we power blasted a ton of dirt out of here. It was being used as an off road buggy, and we gave it a little polish with polishing compound in the buffer, but that still didn't take out a lot of the dents and scratches. So you got a 36 volt motor, 36 volt controller. The easiest way to upgrade the speed is to go to a 48 volt controller. 48 volts worth of batteries and a 48 volt motor. You're looking at 450 for the controller minimum, another 800 for the motor, and then you either have to get two additional batteries or replace all these with 8 volt batteries, which can be like $200 a piece. So you're looking at a couple of grand at least to try to make this thing go faster, and that's just not in the cards for a $299 buggy. If you really want to make one of these things go faster, start with a later model EasyGo TXT model. They make lots of parts for those, including speed kits, and I understand there's even a speed chip for the modern controller they have on that. This is sort of the first generation solid state controller, and there's no speed chip or way of upgrading it. Well, thanks to a fellow on the internet, and I'll provide the link in the comments, there is a way to add a booster pack to this. And what we've done is in the back of the cart, everything's torn apart right now, so you can see everything. I've added two additional golf cart batteries I bought at Sam's Club for $84 each. Again, uh, you add in the cost of the battery boxes and the wiring and the whatnot, it starts to add up. Uh, 
These are attached to a relay here, which is about another 50 bucks, plus tax and shipping. It's a 48 volt relay, which then ties in to what's called the M wire, the motor wire that goes to the main switch. This is the blue wire you see here. Now, the problem is, it's like, okay, so you kick in the relay and uh, that puts 48 volts to the motor. How do you keep it from feeding back into the controller? Well, this big honking diode, which you see I have wrapped with electrical tape here, it prevents the current from going back into the controller. So the current comes through here, boom, we've got 48 volts, and away you go. Uh, the diode was about $45, if you can believe that. It's a big power diode used in industry. And it comes with a huge nut on the back here, and I was kind of stymied as to how to mount this, and I found this stainless steel bracket left over from a barbecue grill from a boat and that bolts onto the M lead and then bolt the diode and then I attach all three wires together here with a bolt and wrapped it all electrical tape to keep from shorting out by accident. So, how do you activate this? Well, initially I had a little handheld switch which was kind of fun and you get it going down the road and you hit the power boost switch and watch it accelerate. That seemed kind of difficult. So I've added a, another relay switch right here. This is actually an easy go part. It was 14 bucks on eBay and I had it hooked into the linkage here so that when you hit the gas, the throttle comes down and hits that. So just as you hit the four here, it gives you the full 48 volts. Uh, how fast does it go? Well, not very. Uh, the design speed of an easy go marathon is 12 miles an hour. 12 divided, 36 volts divided by 12 um, gives you four volt, no, three volts per uh, miles an hour. So as you might imagine, 48 volts, uh, you divide that, you end up with about 16 miles an hour, and hey, guess what? It goes 16 miles an hour uh, on a good day. However, now that we have more voltage and uh, hopefully a little more amperage, uh, we can then put larger wheels and tires. So these are 18-inch wheels and tires. These are brand new, came off the previous owner's a golf cart that he bought brand new and upgraded to larger wheels and tires. That can run anywhere from 300 to 1200 depending on how fancy you want to get. And You can see on a $299 golf cart you don't really want to throw a lot of money at these things. Uh, and of course there's so much more you can do. You can do an upholstery kit. This is sort of a, a made up thing that the previous owner did. You can do the back cargo area with a flip down seat. You could buy a fancy Burlwood dashboard. I made this dashboard out of an old piece of PVC. Uh, you can see it's pretty homemade, and I did the same thing with the steering wheel to take away the little golf cart pencil holder, make it more like a vehicle and less like a golf cart. The previous owner added the lights, and he did a good job. I tied it up the wiring a bit, and uh, of course we added the fold-down tinted windshield. This is another $80. Uh, the original windshield was kind of trashed after over 20 years of use. Uh, but other than that, for a thousand bucks, we got a nice little buggy. Let me put it back together, and we'll take it out for a test spin. Okay, so we have the motor cover back on right here and our battery cover is on. And one question is, well, how do you charge up these batteries? Uh, the unit comes with a 36 volt charger, which I have facing out the window because I parked this thing next to the window and just opened the window and run the cable out. But 36 volts isn't gonna charge 48 volts. Well, I have an old 12 volt charger that I had laying around. And uh, what I did was I wired all the 12 volt accessories through these two six volt golf cart batteries. So first of all, this means that the if you leave the lights on this thing and it runs the battery down, it'll still work on the base 36 volts and get you going 12 miles an hour. Not a problem, you just lose your booster pack. Second of all, it means that since like, for example, this cigarette lighter here and this cigarette lighter here are both wired directly to the battery, I can plug in a cigarette lighter socket uh, plug and charge the batteries that way. So I'm gonna make an adapter for my 12 volt charger to do that and that way I can charge everything and just plug it right in. It's very easy, I don't have to open the battery packs to mess around with it. So let's put the rest of it back together. And so now we have it all buttoned up. As you can see here, we made an inexpensive cargo platform out of a piece of scrap plywood from where they were tearing down Jekyll Island's amphitheater. And I found a piece of scrap carpet and some plastic edging. And it uh, gives us a place to put our beach chairs and coolers. Maybe someday we'll put a one of those reverse facing seats, but those are $300. Uh, the original upholstery has a little mildew on it, but it's serviceable because it's somebody made this backrest for it. Uh, 
and we have the windshield which we folded down so we'll be able to see out of it when we test it out. Okay, you got our foot on the brake. I've added a warning sticker here. Uh, speaking of brakes, we had to put a new brake cables in this, make it go faster, I'll make sure it stops faster. Uh, when you do floor it, the 48 volts is activated, and as a result, um, it will put max torque to the motor, and you can literally burn out. The fellow who came up with this concept puts 72 volts on his golf cart, and his philosophy is to run it until solder comes out the vents, so you know where that's coming, so use it at your own risk. So we have our speedometer running here. We're going to run it in normal mode first. Let's see how fast it goes. Unfortunately, with the GPS, we have a lot of trees here. We don't get a good signal. Okay, it's getting up toward 12 miles an hour, which is standard speed for a golf cart. And now we're going to kick in booster pack. Let's get here, kick in, and let's see how fast it goes.